don't worry, everyone. The Bog Panda branded Virtual Boy, we're working on it. Bog Panda. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bog Panda. I am Kelly at K E L L Y T H U L on Twitter and Instagram. I am Dr. Mike at Official Pagan on everything. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, turn on notifications, leave a comment, check out our merch store. There might even be another t shirt there the next time you do. And eventually the Bog Panda branded Virtual Boy. But we're going to have some issues there. I did a little browsing and uh, those things are clocking in between four and six hundred dollars a piece right now on eBay to try and get one uh, to work on our prototype. <laughs> but we'll see on that. But we did think it would be kind of fun that we came across this video that uh, I found super interesting and fun uh, around some very interesting branding efforts that have been out there. Some of which were pretty surprising to me. <laughs> Different combinations of things. You know, we've all seen kind of the Star Wars Xbox and some of those, some of those deliveries. But there's a lot of, a lot of other ones out there too. So, I shared this video with you, Mike. What, would were you surprised by any of this, or was this all old news? Um, <clears throat> a little bit of both. Like I, I know this is a thing. Like the branded consoles, we I've seen a lot of videos about like people modding consoles and just doing crazy stuff with them. Consoles that shoot fire consoles that are you know built into other things that they shouldn't be um but i do remember as a kid like a lot of branding in video games and this kind of brought that back to me like i remember buying um teenage mutant ninja turtles for the original nintendo classic game um that had a lot of pizza hut branding in there and there was like a coupon for a personal pizza included with the game and things like that you know free for your 60 dollars game purchase there you go <laughs> But I mean, it was like heavy, heavy hand in marketing in a lot of these games. So while I hadn't seen most of these, it doesn't surprise me when I stopped and thought about it. Yeah. And this video is interesting because it is a combination of actual, hey, here's a picture of one of these that was in the wild. Here it is. See it, touch it, look at it. And there were also a few of them that were like, well, there were pictures of this and people talked about it, but we see no evidence that one was ever manufactured. and. The one that I was I noticed that particularly on was the Game of Thrones uh, branded um, Xbox, and uh, it was gorgeous looking. In terms, of, it had kind of the Game Game of Thrones bronze kind of patina to the box itself. They had taken the astrolabes that were always at the very beginning of Game of Thrones, and they had those actually kind of running across the top. So it was from a design perspective, looked really cool. The controllers were Xbox controllers, kind of wrappered in a, a marble or stone kind of look. It was a gorgeous looking machine, uh, but apparently there were no photos of any of these in the wild. So if any of our viewers have happened to score the Game of Thrones Xbox and want to show us a picture of it sitting in your living room, uh, that would be awesome. But I thought that was that was actually one of the coolest looking ones, I thought. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's the one that stands. And it, it's funny because... I, I enjoyed Game of Thrones and we kind of we covered this on a past episode where we kind of talked about the wrapping up of the series a little bit. Um, so you guys should go back, check out our old episodes, make sure you like and comment um, and, you know, subscribe again, create a new YouTube account and subscribe again. It'd be great. <laughs> um, I I'm in a weird spot with Game of Thrones right now because the new show is starting and I'm not excited for it. Because because of the last season of the show, like I feel like I should be because I invested a lot of time in Game of Thrones, but I'm not. I'm not excited for it. But even so, like standing on this precipice of whether or not I'm going to start the new Game of Thrones, that's the one that still stood out for me from this video. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of suffering the same thing, too, in that huge Game of Thrones fan totally loved it. Um, while I don't have quite the level of hatred and anger that a lot of people do over the, the last season, I'm not a big fan of it by any stretch, but I'm not, uh, I can sleep at night. I'm okay. You know, I'm just not like super angry. Uh, but it did kill off for me because a lot of stuff like Breaking Bad, huge Breaking Bad fan. I'll go back and rewatch episodes of Breaking Bad 
because I know it ends great. <laughs> you know, it's very good. But here, I've I've really not gone back and rewatched any Game of Thrones. And there's a bunch of episodes that would be great, but at that whole end of this deal runs. And I'm kind of with you in that. I mean, I I do I do know I'll watch I do know I'll watch it to start uh, and uh, to see how the new new series runs. But I'm not nearly as over the moon as I was with like when Better Call Saul came out. Uh, sadly now gone, but that kind of stuff was super awesome. So yeah, that was a good one. Uh, other kind of little discoveries I had in here, and this one was tied to, so it was a Game Gear Coca-Cola branded one, not a shocker. And not, I mean, Coke brands a ton of things. So, so that's uh that wasn't a big shocker. And this is, I have my own thing. I should have mentioned that one too. Um, <clears throat> I remember seeing that. <laughs> so I did see that in the wild. Um, I'm a weirdly huge fan of Coca-Cola branded stuff. I'm not even like a big soda guy. Like, give me, you know, give me, I'm a, I'm healthy. My body's a temple kind of guy. So, you know, give me three fingers of whiskey neat. <laughs> that's, it. that's all I need to get going. So I'm, I'm really not a big soda guy. I like Coca-Cola branded stuff though. I don't know if it's the red color. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's always appealed to me. I've always thought they're, they're branding, has always been excellent. And we actually have a bunch of Coca-Cola branded stuff here. There's even a Coca-Cola mini fridge that we've been keeping in our, I have a room that's just dedicated to all the band merch. So when people order merch, we go in, pull everything and pack it all in there and bring it out. Um, um, There's a Coca-Cola mini fridge in there that we're moving now into the arcade and is being stocked with vanilla ice's energy drink (laughs) for the arcade. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> shameless product plug, even though I, I have nothing to do with it, but I tried one of those recently. <laughs> I ordered a case of them and tried one. Um, so th- those will be stocked in the arcade. So but there, I have quite a few like Coca-Cola branded things. So not sure what my appeal, what the appeal is to me with it, but I remember seeing that. Yeah. And it, it is just iconic and there's just something really kind of classic about it. The color combination is fantastic, but it does, it just translates well. There's a nostalgia component, but it's just also good design. So it, it, I'm with you. It's super cool. Uh, what's not super cool is the game that they included uh, with it. Apparently it wasn't like the greatest, but uh, as the video points out, it was better than Pepsi Man. <laughs> and so um, I just saw a little snippet of, the, of what, if, and I'm assuming this is a real thing, but I've never played Pepsi Man. And based on what I saw, I'm never interested in playing Pepsi Man and shocking, not shocking at all. You know, Coke has once again outperformed Pepsi. So there you go. Yeah, and I am. I if I'm drinking soda, it's Coke over Pepsi every time for me. Yep. No, yeah, for for me as well. Um. So the Tari Lynx uh, gets a little bit of love in this. Uh, more love than it got as a handheld, <laughs> but a little, uh, you know, and maybe perhaps. Part of Link's downfall was their fairly poor selection in who they wanted to do branding with, which included Marlboro, <laughs> which for those of you who don't know uh, is, is, was, not sure anymore, a cigar- cigarette manufacturer. Um, the Coca-Cola of cigarettes, I would say, for a time. Yeah. And so what, uh, I just, I don't. I don't know what that marketing department was thinking to say kids. Okay. We got kids. That's what, that's what plays this thing. What are kids like a pack of smokes and like video smoke. games. <laughs> there you go. So uh, also came with a game. So, which was basically a way to spin Marlboro billboards in the background of whatever you were doing. But uh, that was of all of these, that was the one I was like, I figured, Oh, that's a, that's like an onion article. That's not, that's not, not true <laughs> <laughs> i knew that that existed um i've read about that somewhere else i think it was like a, just the general like anti oh you know what it was um it was a some sort of editorial about mad men when it's sp- sticking with tv shows when that was kind of wrapping up did you watch that yes i did big fan so that i was a big fan of that as well i another one i didn't like the way it ended but not to the degree of breaking <laughs> like i just I didn't find the ending satisfying, not, you know, an unwatchable train wreck that was poorly slapped together. <laughs> There's a big difference. Um, 
that the character, the, the Don Draper character is loosely based off of an actual advertising executive who created, or is one of the creators of the mall pro man, the iconic ad campaign that they had. So I think I was reading something about that and that they mentioned, you know, how far that branding had gone from Marlboro even into video games and things like that. Um, we talked a little bit about the Lynx. The Lynx was a poorly designed handheld. And this just seems like another one of those, you know, long laundry list of bad choices that it's already made in their designs. And it's a shame because it carried over to the Jaguar also, which I'm a big defender of. I think the Jaguar was a good system. It was just extremely poorly designed in every, and it had a, a bunch of bad games. So, because um, there's a rumor that was very persistent at the time it came out that the Jaguar was not really a 64 bit system, that it was really like two 32 bit processors <laughs> working together and they were trying to pass that off as 64 bit. That's not true. What was happening there? Um, 64-bit systems didn't exist. So in order, they, Atari thought in order to help out the game developers, they would add a 16-bit processor that would basically act as a way, like an in for programmers to send information through there to the actual new chipset of processors as, as like a cheat for them. So of course, being lazy and wanting to save money, they were like, we can just make 16 bit games for this. So essentially half of the games that came out were really just 16 bit games. So that's why people were seeing them. They're like, there's no way <laughs> this is, you know, 64 bit. This looks exactly like what I've been getting. Cause it was so, and it was just such a poorly designed system. Again, like that choice, uh, the controller is infamously terrible for the Jaguar. Same thing with the Lynx. Lynx was, I, I played a Lynx, super awkward to hold. And it's a shame because now going back on Evercade and Super Console X and things like that and playing a lot of Lynx games, there's great games for it. So it's really kind of a shame that they were lost in that shuffle. Maybe if, you know, they had broken through with their cigarette ads to kids, yep. we'd, we'd, we'd be sitting here chain smoking, playing our Lynx games right now. Well, they got they got them as customers, but they all died. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was not it was not a plan built for the long term. <laughs> so that's a shame. So on that uplifting note, I don't know if there's any other games you wanted to kind of call out. We just killed like, off kids with cancer. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that seems like a reasonable place to stop the show. So, <laughs> so appreciate you folks watching. If you're uh, if you had a particularly favorite uh, branded uh, device that kind of came out, and you'd like to share. Let us know. If you also would like to send Mike and I a little bit of money to help build our funds for the Bog Panda branded Virtual Boy. Uh, we're, we're we're very open to receiving that and continuing to work on it. So, thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, everyone.